we, we're going to have to skate through this real quick, but efficacy is basically, can you make it work in your study? Effectiveness, does it work in the real world? I don't care if you can make it work at your major stroke center. Should we be pushing this in Burke County? Not at all clear. So, and there's a lot of data that this is really, really problematic. So the Cleveland stroke trial, yeah, <laughs> that's nasty. Here's what happens when you unleash this drug in the real world. And this is a problem. These studies have people that love strokes. This is what they do. These are your focused folk. When you start saying, oh, we should all be using it, you're saying that we should be using this in community places. And that's a really bad idea. And they found this out in this study showing that they had intracranial hemorrhage rates of 16%, which was double what it was uh, in most of the studies. Okay, So when you unleash this drug in the real world, people make mistakes. You end up with people having migraines and seizures getting TPA. doesn't work well. So ASEP had a policy in 2012 that they updated in 2012 saying, hey, we can start giving TPA. We want you uh, with a level A recommendation saying that you really ought to do that and the evidence is kind of in on it, that you should give TPA within three hours. It also said level B in that three to four and a half hour window. No level C evidence, which is amazing because I've just told you nothing but level C evidence my entire lecture so far. And then they, they decided to revise it, okay? They had an open forum and then nerds like me wrote in and I really did write in and told them what I thought. They said, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna ask people what they think about this, okay? Because we're gonna rewrite the, the policy. What did they do? They screwed it up. <laughs> so this is the foam cast uh, graph of, of what they changed. But basically, instead of having the prior draft that said that there, the level A evidence was that there was harm due to hemorrhage, they basically ditched that, making that a lower grade of evidence and basically saying that it can be, um, should be offered and can be given which is legally a very problematic phrase of should be offered and can be given. That should kind of hints towards a standard of care that they, I don't think they really intended to. But there's a real problem with this because it leaves you in a sticky situation. If you're an ER provider, you are much more likely to be sued for not giving TPA than you are for giving TPA. Okay, I don't want to sugarcoat it. If you don't push lytics, you're going to have a whole lot of neurologists willing to line up and say, you should have pushed lytics. You're not going to have very many neurologists that say, well, you know, I really don't think the systems were in place and his evidence-based review of the literature is really excellent. So Genentech got to him, okay? Tons of cash. The HA has been bought. They actually unbelievably had the Genentech built their headquarters for over $11 million. I wish I was making this up, but this is, this is true. And and the number of people that are, are basically sloshing around with this money is huge. Very few people have a dog in this fight that are against it, that aren't just academics yelling in the wind. 